Have you ever seen this uh, nice fellow before, this robot? Now, Romeo and Pepper. I've been working with them for 10 years. A and uh, Romeo, the big one, is almost my fifth child. I discovered robotics um, after my master's a in AI at the end of the 80s, and I never left them since. First, I've been working 20 years at CIE, a research institute where I developed robots for nuclear application and others uh, for uh, disabled uh, handicapped people. Then 10 years at Aldebaran of Bank Robotics with these fellows. And today, I'm a, an expert in AI at uh, Renault for Intelligent Car. Compared to the AI I discovered when I was young, the AI of today is incredibly more powerful. You can find any information you want on the web. Uh, AI can defeat, you, defeat any chess or go master uh, was supposed to be the, the, the most intelligent guy in the world. And computer vision has made a tremendous gap. AI computers can recognize your face, as we do, but it can also detect teeny tumor much better than any expert radiologist. At, at Aldebaran, we were trying to make our uh, robot ever uh, clever, more clever and more clever. For instance, we thought now to climb a ladder. And uh, Pepper has been trained to, to play, you know, cup and ball game. And um, by training, so we showed it the, the good gesture once, and then it trained again and again and again, and finally it succeeds. And when it succeeds to find the good gesture, it can redo it exactly, perfectly, and win at every time. I'm always completely amazed when I see robots doing uh, uh, wonderful tricks. And I'm not the only one. When we conducted experiments with Pepper, um, uh, with elderly people, they were completely amazed uh, to see the robots doing uh, 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 tasks by, by themselves. And the favorite moment was when the robot goes to charging, to the charging station. The fact that the robot decides by itself, wow, my battery is low, I have to go charging, and does it, was completely amazing for them. Another thing that is really amazing to me are the magic tricks of my son. My oldest son, Simon, is an amateur magician, and I'm always delighted when the, the card you know, I picked up in the deck reappeared in my, in my wallet or in my pocket or in my ear. Sometimes he explained me the trick, and it's always of very simple, very clever, requiring some dexterity, of course. And I think AI is the same kind of magic. It looks magic, but it's not. When you know what is behind the curtain, you are amazed, but a little bit disappointed. For instance, if you change the ladder of now, it will redo exactly the same gesture. And of course, it will fall down and, and, and pathetically keep on crawling on the ground, ridiculously. And, and the day paper succeeded in, uh, in this cup and ball game, we brought it in the, in the CEO's office to show the performance, and of course, it failed. Actually, we, 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 did, we trained la, uh, Pepper in our lab on the, with a special slope on the ground. And when we were in the CEO's office, you know, on the thick carpet, the vertical angle of the robot was not exactly the same. So the perfect gesture there was not the perfect ju the gesture here. And it failed. Of course, all these little troubles can be fixed. Uh, but what I want you to, to see is uh, that the, the intelligence of a machine is very narrow. As soon as you change a little bit uh, uh, the, the situation, things can go completely wrong. Do you know this story of the Tesla autonomous car that went directly through uh, a, a, a truck knocked over in the middle of the highway? The vision system of Tesla is one of the best in the world. It has been trained by watching millions of driving Hours, millions of hours of driving video. Each image of it was annotated, you know, by showing on this picture you have pedestrian, a car, a cycle, um, uh, this is a tree, uh, this is a building, this is a road. You have to show millions of bicycles to the system for it to recognize another bicycle. And this tedious work made by human beings is necessary to make machine intelligent. And thanks to this supervised learning, you are, your, your, your computer, your vision system, is able to recognize 99.9% .9 of the object you will ever cross on the road. But not 100%. During the training phase, it never has seen 
such a track in the middle of the road. So it was unable to recognize this object as an obstacle. You probably thought it was the, um, the sky or, or a billboard above the road, but not an obstacle that should be avoided. And then it went through. Today, we consider that autonomous driving will avoid plenty of accidents that human beings have. But it will also generate crashes that even the worst driver could never have. AI is perfect in its domain, but as soon as it's outside of it, it's, it, it, it's a drama. And, 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 and the, 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 the worst is that AI does not have the consciousness of being outside of its domain. So, what is going to happen now? Will researchers solve all these little problems, or, or will AI reach uh, a kind of limit? In um, 1997, when uh, Deep Blue defeated uh, the, the, the chess world master Kasparov, people say, yes, you know, but chess, <laughs> it's simple. It will never happen with Go. That is really complicated. And 20 years later, it happened. AlphaGo defeated Lee Sedol, thanks to the huge progress of AI and the Moore's law, you know, that makes uh, the, the, the computing power twice uh, more powerful every two years. Now we can implement solutions that we'd even dare ho to hope um, uh, in, in, in the 80s because of the required computing power. But today, you can run a uh, neural deep neural network on a laptop. Uh, your smartphone can defeat you at any game you play. So it's really difficult to guess what will be the limitation of AI. The victory of AlphaGo made me think that saying that something Im it is impossible uh, to AI, it's impossible. Today, researchers are working on unsupervised learning. It means that you don't have to explain for each input what is supposed to be the expected output. In the domain of out-of-domain detection, we are progressing too. It means that the AI will be able to say, wow, but this object I've never seen before, so I don't take a decision. Yes. That's, that's the first step to our consciousness. It's, it's nice to know that I don't know. But the common sense is missing. You, as a driver, when you see an object that you don't know the name of in front of you, you know what to do. You know if you should brake or turn around or, 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 or keep on. But AI does not have this implicit understanding of unknown situations. When you think about the way you learn, to, to, to make computers learning. You know how it's simple to learn, but how it's com com complex to explain. And watching children learning is a good way to, to try to understand. A baby does not need to, to, to see millions of teddy bears to recognize another teddy bear. But in the other way around, it's incredible to see how difficult it is for them to remember that 7 times 8 is 56, when a very cheap calculator can do it. Hey, Daddy, if a very cheap calculator can do it, why should I remember that? Hey, I I'm talking to these people. Ask your mother. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so it means that um, a, a, a community of researchers is working on what we call developmental robotics. They want to implement the way uh, that children learn. And without or very, with very few supervision, only by experiment, by experience, a computer will discover the world, the effect of the, his motion to his, the rest of his body. And this is, this is a very, very complex task. It's a, it's, it requires a lot of mathematics to do that. But it will take a very, very long time for this kind of intelligence to become a threat for humanity. Because at the end of the day, that is the question, that the reason why you're listening to me, will AI overcome humanity? The idea of singularity, you know, singularity will be the moment where computers will be more clever than human beings. As we've seen, we're already there. Computers can defeat you at any games. A computer can store and use more information than all humans can do all together. Alan Turing, you know, the, the, it's one of the fathers of the AI, he said, AI will really exist the day 
you will not be able to detect if you're talking to a machine or to a human being. Eh? When you discuss with, uh, with some chatbots today, you can have long discussion, sometimes more interesting than a discussion that you can have with a, a football fan at the stadium. Some people have tried to evaluate the computing power of a human brain. They say it's about 20 petaflops. As you know, one petaflop is one million of billion operations per second. Others say it's a thousand petaflops. Anyway, today the most powerful computers are 100 petaflops. You're not so f we're not so far. And what do we have? Do we have computers able to create by themselves even more intelligent computers? No. So, okay, futurologists say that singularity will happen in 15, 20 years from now. But what will happen in the meantime? Always more computing power? Sure. Self-learning machine? Yeah. Self-replicating machine? Why not? But does it mean that this will lead to the destruction of humanity? In a way, it's a very anthropomorphic way to see the world, thinking that if you are more clever than people, you will overcome them. Why couldn't, couldn't, we, couldn't we imagine that we can live peacefully, side by side, with very intelligent machines? Like the electricity, like the internet, AI will be more and more important in our lives. If we try to compete in its excellence domain, we are lost. It's like trying to run faster than a car on the highway. It's silly. But being a pedestrian, you can climb mountains, you can dance, uh, you can play football. Of course, you cannot play anymore, on, you cannot run on the highway anymore. And, and do you regret it? And that's my point. Why shall we regret that AI can do for us? AI is inevitable at chess? Okay, but did we stop playing chess? No, but we can have AI as a sparring partner to prepare the next game against our friends. It will be difficult to turn AI off. So now we have to imagine the, li the life that go with it. A study in 2018 showed that 60% of the jobs created in the US uh, between 1980 and 2015 had names that did not exist before, you know, because of uh, uh, internet and computers, of course. But with AI, it will be the same. It's, it's, it's funny to see that every week you can have new application on your smartphone. I think there are about 2 million applications available on the Apple Store. None of them are, not all of them are, are made of, of AI, but plenty are. And, and, and it's incredible to see how imaginative people are to create these new services for us. And AI is a wonderful support for them, for their creativity. By the way, it's interesting to see that uh, so many people are able to develop AI-based applications because AI algorithms rely on very high-level mathematics. Of course, you know the principle of neural networks. So you have a, a, a data coming from the previous layers, coming there, and, uh, and each value is, is multiplied by the white, uh, weight. Altogether, they are summed up and then transfer to the next neural uh, layers. That is pretty simple. What is a little bit tricky is to compute the multiplicative weight for each neuron and to have the, the expected output. And what is a little bit complicated is when you try to deal with images, for instance, then you need convolutive networks, be more complicated. And if you want to, to deal with video, you need convolutive and recursive neural networks. This is really complicated. And AI researchers are working hard to make the AI more and more efficient. Thousands of very high-level scientific papers are published every year. What I want you to understand with this is that even if AI is based on learning, it does not develop by itself. Brilliant human beings are improving the performance of AI. And the learning part of it is just how to apply this generic architecture to specific use cases, like, for instance, translating Greek instead of Hungarian or recognizing plants instead of birds. This 
make possible for almost anyone to develop AI-based applications. The idea that researchers find, as soon as the researcher find this, this, this new architecture, they publish it, and you can reuse it. Today, amongst the best researchers in AI come from Google and, and Facebook. They are not really public institutions or philanthropic associations, but they publish almost everything. And then, good engineer can reuse that for its own application. It's, um, actually, it's a, it's a massive change in the way an economy can grow. Finally, I would like to um, compare the AI to a, to a big wave. You can consider it as a terrifying tsunami. But because AI comes from California, you also can consider it like surfers do. It's a way to have fun and to go fast. You have different kind of, 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 of surfer. You have the researchers, you have the developers, and you have the users. And as users, what is really important is to understand what can and cannot do AI. AI cannot be human. AI, AI has still hard time to deal with complex human emotions. AI cannot improvise in this complex situation. And that's where we have a place to deal with people, to take care of people in complex situations. In this situation, if you behave like a robot, sooner or later you will be replaced by a robot. But if you behave like a human, you will always have your place. Thank you. <laughs>